So since our new knee stretch control is something that the animator will be using, let's make sure it's on the visible layer that the animator can will have open. And let's give it a nice shape so it's easier to select and doesn't look like just another bone. Now if you look back on layer 20 here, you'll see that I made this wire sphere shape. And I can simply copy the name of it. Right. I have to hover my mouse right over the text field, Control c Click here, and in the object field for the bone, give it that wire sphere shape. I can hide this layer again. So now I have a nice shape for it, so if we go into our visible layer that the animator will have on, they'll see a nice control for them, which is what they want. Now let's examine some other problems here that we might be able to rectify as we go along. Um, first of all, if we look at the um, calf, it has a stretch to target right here, but it doesn't really start out from copying the rotation of this bone here. So if this bone were to twist, you'll notice that the um, the calf bone doesn't really respond by twisting that much. And we can rectify that by having a copy rotation on the calf. So we can click this bone and click this one and add um, a copy rotation. But you'll notice how it's not doing the right thing right now. And that is an order of constraints problem. We really want it to copy the rotation of this bone first and then stretch to its target. And the way we fix that is if you look at this constraint here, you can click on this little up arrow and move it up in the stack like so. Now it will copy the rotation of the calf, but it will continue to stretch to its target. And now let's see if I can demonstrate some ugly twisting. Well, it doesn't look too bad. However, However, the knee, however, the um, the B bone here that we created for the thigh is no longer really effective because the calf is no longer a connected child of the thigh. So there's nothing to cause this B bone to twist. It'll in fact never twist uh, as things stand right now. And uh, to do that, we have to create a child for that B bone that will twist it. Now I'll just demonstrate in a side on the side here how that works if I add a bone and let's say I subdivide it and dot key and just scale that up a little bit okay so this is a connected child of this bone now if I were to duplicate that and make it a bit bigger so we can see it now if I were to make this a multi-segmented bone a B bone and add a copy rotation here. I'll just do this to demonstrate the twisting. So you'll see this is what we want the uh, the knee, the uh, the thigh to do in case that the, the uh, calf twists relative to the thigh. And um, so we're just going to duplicate the setup on our on our on our actual leg. And the way I do that is, of course, to create an inline child over here that will cause the twisting to happen and then constrain that child properly. So the first thing I'm going to do is use that tr trick I used earlier to create that. I'll snap the cursor to selection here, uh, hit the dot key, so I'm scaling around the cursor, scale this bone up, like so, and then snap the cursor here and then hit control Z to get my bone back to its normal size and then I'll just add a bone and then I'll make this bone the child of this bone control P and this time connected and I'll snap it over there and then I'll shift S selection to cursor which is what I wanted and I'll just shrink that down a little bit so it's own bone that you can kind of see in the, the mess of bone. So you can always snap things to the cursor like that. 
and if you want to scale them differently you can snap to the roots and then just scale scale so that everything is kind of distinguishable so this is a connected child of this one so it'll twist with it and now we need something for this bone to copy the rotation off that's a child of this bone so I'll just duplicate it so right, shift D hit alt s scale the duplicate up and then maybe I'll scale it down a little bit so it's easier to pick apart and make it a child of this one this time I'll hit keep offset since I want it to stay up there and we'll call this one thigh twist since that's what it does dot L and we'll call this one mm, knee follower dot L really doesn't matter what you call it so long as you can know what it is when you see it and in this case these two bones are not something the animator will ever have to touch that's the child of the calf so it will inherit its rotation so you hit tab and here's our knee follower here's our thigh twist control alt c copy rotation and we're done you notice now exactly lining up because there's some non-uniform scaling going on due to the fact that they are uh, children of uh, stretchy bones and those stretchy bones are scaled non-uniformly however it's close enough that it works for our purposes and so now we have fixed some problems with the setup and what I can do is delete these bones that I made here for illustration delete them there we go and if you don't want them to scale around um, there's something I did in in my rig is I made this sneaky bone here called don't touch and um, what it does is nothing let's make everything back to default so what what this bone does is nothing it doesn't move around at all it doesn't get touched by the animator it's not scaled to anything and the reason it's there is because if I don't want something to scale around um, or at least try to make it not scale around I can make it copy the scale of this bone which stays at 1 so I can just go like this control C copy scale and I'll bump that up like so I can do the same thing for this bone if I want to it's not really important it's just a little silly uh, silly rigging trick or something like that I don't know so now it looks a little bit more sane. Still not perfect, but uh, better than before at least. And uh, really, it does what it needs to do uh, for our purposes. So now we have uh, this control for the leg, and we have our little control for the knee, and everything should more or less work. However, we do have one last step to do. Um, I can move the seat knee from side to side by just dragging this bone directly. However, that's not going to interpolate too nicely uh, in many cases because it's not actually sitting on the IK thing. So what we need is a way to actually get the um, IK bone here to bend from side to side and twist the knee from side to side. And uh, the way we do that is to add uh, yet another constraint. Now there's many, many ways to do this. And uh, the one I'm going to show now is what's on Man Candy 2. It's not really the best way. Um, the problems you get is that you want control over the knee, but you don't want the knee to flip the wrong direction. And um, there isn't really an easy way to do that right now. You can set up some constraints so that you can control the knee completely, but you will get some flipping in some poses that the animator can fix manually by moving that target and uh, that target is going to be a floating is going to be a bone that floats around somewhere here that they can move around to get this thing to point in its general direction and the flipping happens when you go to one side of it and then it flips to to to, to see it so you have to animate it up so you stop the flip, flipping in those poses um, I don't really like the floating bones so I used a different method in man candy and um, it's a bone that you rotate the unfortunate side of it is that it doesn't 
give you enough degrees of freedom to really control the knee in every single possible pose. But it's good enough for quite a few poses, and I'm hoping that Man Candy 3 will have a much better setup for controlling the knee angle. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll set it up by simply um, going into edit mode and creating a target for this guy to rotate to. And all I'm going to do is duplicate him. First of all, I'll snap the cursor here so I can scale down right away. So I'll duplicate this bone and I'll scale, whoops, hit the dot key and scale relative to the cursor. And I'll call this thigh rot ik dot l or something like that. And we'll hit tab. And uh, let's uh, make it a little bit skinnier so we can see it. There we go. And we'll make it an IK target for this bone. Control, control I. And then we'll add an IK. And you notice everything went screwy again because it's IK, but we'll just have to press some buttons and everything will magically work again. We'll limit the chain length to one. And we'll make it a rotational IK instead of a locational IK. And we'll uncheck stretch. And because we don't want it to stretch to meet it, we want it to stay at the same length. So unchecking stretch is very important. Um, I can crank down the position weight there, but it doesn't really make any difference in this case. So how does this work? Well, now, first of all, let's move the foot a little up so that we can bend the knee enough to see a difference. Now if I rotate this in Z, it rotates the chain around like so. And just to be nice to animators and show them uh, what they need to do, we'll lock everything else, but it's local Z rotation. So they can tell from a glance what the bone should be doing. And let's give it a nice shape too, since it's going to be a control. So we'll unhide this layer and you see this shape right here is pretty appropriate. Swing, I'll copy the name of it, go here and paste the name of it here. I mean, I could have just typed it in, but why, why type when you can just copy? And then we have a nice little swing control. And let's put it on the same layer as the other controls. And so now I have the complete basic stretchy knee leg setup. So we have this, have this control. See, and once, once the leg is straight, it's not gonna do anything because you know, there's no bend in the knee. And if I bend the knee up, then it should work. And like I said, there are some positions in which this bone will not be effective, unfortunately. So that's the basic setup for the leg. And in the next step, we're going to add the controls to do rubber hose style animation with Mancandy.